Hi everyone and welcome back to my podcast Charm P3 Forever. So today I'm joined by the lovely beautiful Sabah Homayoun and most of us Charm fans know her as Ginny the Genie from obviously Charmed um, but she has done a lot of other really cool projects and she has one upcoming very soon which I'm really excited to discuss with her today so we can just get right into it. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, it's a pleasure. I'm glad to be here. So before we get into Charm, we'll just discuss a little bit about you first. So something I couldn't find anywhere on the internet, which we spoke about recently, was where are you from? <laughs> I am, I was born in Canada. Um, I grew up in the States, in Nashville, but I am Persian. I am Iranian. Okay. Yes. Great. Which shocked me. I could not believe that it wasn't anywhere um, on my social media. I guess because it's such it's the first thing that I think about of myself. Mm -hmm. So it was so obvious. I don't know. I just didn't have it anywhere and I corrected it. Yeah. I mean, I think for, for any act, actors, actresses, it's, it's just basic information. I feel that would be on the internet, but all I could find was that Montreal, Canada, but I couldn't find anything about you being Persian. I think on when I did search a little bit, I think you did mention it on one of your Instagram posts, but to just find that information online I couldn't find it anywhere so I was just really curious I was like I, so I was like it's definitely you know, something kind of like it's something like Arab Middle East and like something like that but I just couldn't be sure so it's really nice to just be able to know as well so I think it's great uh, as well for just other you know Persian people to know that you know it's nice to see other Persian actors out there yeah definitely I mean I would have appreciated it as a kid to see Persian actors on TV it would have even when I first moved to Hollywood, I, I, there weren't that many. So, I, you know, definitely I take it seriously. I don't know why it wasn't on there, but it's been corrected. And it's something that obviously I'm incredibly proud of. And I mean, it's my culture. It's who I am. A yes, big part I'm, really glad I, I'm really glad I pointed that out because it's not. Nice I, I am so glad there. you pointed that out. Oh, my God. <laughs> so also, how long now have you been an actress for? Or actor. What do you uh, also? What is it? Would you prefer actor or actress? Because I, you know, I, I usually know. call myself an actor. actor. I don't know okay. why. I just, I, I just wanted to know. I just wanted to be sure. <laughs> um, but it's possible, like I interchange. But usually, when I'm referring to myself, I say I'm an actor. Okay. Um, I mean, I've been acting since I was a little kid, but because I grew up in Tennessee, there, you know, it wasn't like I was in the business. I wasn't. I was just taking classes. Um, but I moved to Los Angeles. Like if we want to say that's when um, I really started my career, I moved to Los Angeles after I graduated from graduate school in 2002. So I moved down here in 2002. And I think I got my first job in 2003. And then it just went from there with little breaks in, in there for having children and raising children. And how, um, do you remember which, what your first acting role was? It was um, a pilot with Alicia Silverstone. Um, it was called Mismatch. And it was my first role and it was a co-star, I think. It was either a co-star or a guest star, I can't remember. And I was so excited and I got cut from the episode. No. <laughs> but like, yeah, shortly after that, like I would say like within three weeks of getting Mismatch, I got another pilot called The DA with Sarah Paulson and that was like going to be a recurring role if it got picked up and then I don't then it sort of blends because then it it sort of was like procedurals crime you know I it's hard to remember after that oh but that's really cool that's such a shame you got cut oh that must be <laughs> so frustrating when that happens like you went there shot it and then they don't use it um, it wasn't so much frustrating as it was really embarrassing because when it's your first job, you tell everyone and um, you're so excited. And so my mom and dad were watching and it was a small part. It was not big. So it was just, it was, it was, I felt, I felt bad for them. And I felt, you know, interestingly, I got, you know, for me, it's on your resume and it's mm -hmm. so even if you get cut, it doesn't matter. It's on your resume. So for me personally, I wasn't frustrated. Mm -hmm. It was more just, you know, disappointing everyone 
in my family who had um, tuned in. <laughs> well, that's the great thing. At least you still get the credit for that role. So yeah. that's important. I mean, that really, when you're working, starting out, that's what's important. And do you remember what your first audition was like? I do. I remember it vividly. So when you graduate from graduate school, you have something called a showcase mm -hmm. um, that you perform essentially a scene um, in front of a bunch of casting directors and agents. And we did one in Los Angeles and one in New York City. And when I was uh, after the showcase in New York City, I was meeting agents and casting directors, and I actually got an audition while I was in New York. Uh, one of the casting directors that saw me wanted me to come in and audition for a part. And it was for, oh, it was a pilot, and I don't even remember what the pilot was necessarily, but I remember going in and the casting director was like, whoa, 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 whoa. You're still thinking you're on the stage. Bring it down, bring it down, make it smaller, make it smaller. And it felt like a little mini acting lesson. Mm -hmm. um, so that was pretty amazing. Um, my first audition in Los Angeles when I moved to LA was, um, what was the CW before the CW? Was it the WB? WB. Oh, it was one of like, the superhero shows on the WB. Um, okay. And it was like for like this princess, like this like fighting princess. Oh, interesting. Did that show ever, did it air? Did it actually get picked up or? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Because I, I know pretty much most WB shows, and I, I don't ever remember seeing one about a fighting princess, so I don't know if that... Yeah, it probably ever... never got picked up, you know? Yeah, it's yeah. just, when you're auditioning for so many pilots, it's hard to keep track, and they sort of begin to blend together, because once I moved down here, it was like auditions every day. It mm -hmm. was really just... Uh, zero to 90 in like two seconds. It was just... I was I was in it. Yeah. And do you ever get nervous before auditions or are you quite confident? Oh, I, I get nervous every time, every time. If I'm not nervous, there's something really wrong. Mm -hmm. um, I think the thing that shifts, I'm always nervous, but the thing that shifts is like my level of confidence. There are certain roles I go in and even though I'm nervous, I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna like knock this out of the park. And then there are certain auditions I go in and I'm feeling a little insecure about it for whatever reason, mm -hmm. um, but I am always nervous. I think the key is using your nerves to get a better performance. Mm -hmm. And it sometimes works and it sometimes doesn't. Yeah, I think that's a normal thing, anything, yeah. anything in life to be a bit nervous. So I think that's definitely normal. I think, I think if you're not, then yeah, I think like you said, there is a, something wrong. You know, you, I think you need to have those nerves. Yeah, as long as you care, you're going to be nervous. Exactly. I think if you're not, then it makes you just a bit like too cocky, and it's like okay. Totally. Totally. So why did you choose a career in acting then? Um, I don't, you know, like, I don't think you choose a career in acting. I think it sort of chooses you. Um, this is a brutal, like, <laughs> horrible business. Mm -hmm. um, and so unless it is like, it feels like a bit of a calling mm -hmm. or a passion, um, I don't think it is something that someone should pursue um, because it is brutal and it is so unpredictable. Um, and it has gotten exponentially harder to get work now than it was when I, when I first started. Um, but why? I love to perform, right? I, I love people watching me perform. I, I just, if be it like a Persian party and I'm dancing in the middle of the circle or I'm on a stage doing Shakespeare or, um, you know, in front of the camera, it's just something that is, I get a rush. I get, and, and also with even just the practice of acting, I enjoy, I loved graduate school. I loved, you know, pushing my boundaries. I loved when like you're doing something and all of a sudden you get a swell of emotion that you weren't expecting. It is, it is like, 
I, I, you know, it's like surfing when you catch a good wave, you just, it's the best. And have you, have you done a lot of um, stage acting then alongside filming? Um, since moving to LA, I've done very little, unfortunately. Um, I, you know, when you first move to LA, it's like to go and do theater, you feel like, oh my God, what are, what opportunities am I missing in LA? Um, so even though there were opportunities to do amazing theater, I always turned them down because I felt like, well, I can't miss pilot season or I can't miss this. And I think in retrospect, I wish I had done more theater and taken the risk to step away because it is my, my true passion is the theater. I mean, it's so much more exciting, um, to have a live audience than to get take after, you know, it's just, it's a different beast and the words are also so much more um powerful in theater I think um so I, I do regret not doing more um so that's like a goal of mine eventually to get back to the theater for sure well I think it's never too late and I think it yeah it, it is amazing for you to get to do that and yeah it's, it's so nice as well like I love going to the theater theater and you know seeing these live performances and you also you see just how hard it is because obviously like you said filming is take after take and it's it's exhausting but you know on stage that's it you can't you can't redo that once it's done it's done so you really can't yeah. make any mistakes and I can imagine just the pressure as well it's just it's very different and there's a craft involved there's a real skill set you know taking care of your voice how you present yourself on a stage how you it, you know the school that I went to, I think it's a 2,500 seat theater and it's like multiple balconies. So it's like, how do you act to the person, acting to the person in the orchestra in the first row is easy, but how do you get that little like dot up in the second balcony? Yeah. So both vocally as well as your emotion. So there's a skill set there and anything that, that pushes those skill sets is more exciting, but it also is like kind of exciting that you can do it. Mm -hmm. and um what would you if acting hadn't worked out for you did you have any ideas of like what other careers you'd want to pursue um so when I uh was in high school I applied for pre-med at the same time as I did theater so it was one of those like I was very um I was very academic growing up. Um, I had, you know, good grades or what. I was a Persian girl, right? Of course I had good grades. So it was like, <laughs> um, and, you know, my parents sort of stayed out of it because they didn't want to ever feel like they had been involved in the question, in the, in the, in the path I chose because, if it didn't work out, they didn't want me to turn around and be able to blame them yeah. <laughs> or have regrets because I didn't pursue it. So it was really up to me. Um, I loved the human body. I loved biology. So that was something that I was considering. Um, but I just decided like, I wouldn't want to be a patient and know that my doctor that's like cutting into me really wanted to be an actor <laughs> being a doctor was their second choice so I was like maybe that's not such a good idea um but you know as I got into the business I think you know there's always the fallback of like going back to law school or um but uh I love to teach I think I think now if I had to go back not all the way back but let's say if I were to like drop acting now <laughs> I would want to teach. I've always been a teacher. I've tutored my whole life. Um, I've taught acting my whole life. So I definitely would love to like run a theater department. Um, that would be amazing. Oh, that's amazing. I think that's really nice as well when you can pass your knowledge and everything you've learned on to like the next generation and they can learn mm -hmm. from you. I think that's really amazing thing to do. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I want I'd want to definitely work with children. If I were to do it, I wouldn't want like a college level theater program. I'd want like kids. Mm -hmm. It's good to start young, I think. And you're you seem like such a you know you're such a lovely person and like a good influence. <laughs> and they need that, you know. <laughs> well, it's just an opportunity opportunity to be messy. Like what you know when you're a kid, 
and you're in school all day, it's like there are so many expectations to like sit and be quiet and behave. And I would want acting class to be messy and to be coloring outside of the lines and, and taking chances and being silly and being stupid. Um, it would be sort of like the opposite of everything they're doing in school. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the great thing about kids is that when you're, you know, an adult, you don't, you have that fear in you. So, you know, you, you wouldn't do things that kids do. It's great being a kid because you don't have that fear. You'll just do whatever yes. for yourself, just kind of go with it. You know, when you're an adult, you think about it a lot and you think, oh no, this has to be perfect and this must be this way. So I think it's great when you can do it with kids and just have fun. And yes. But if you're an adult who took an acting class as a kid, it would be easier to take risks as an adult because you have that sort of foundation and life skill. Yeah, absolutely. Well, <laughs> if you ever teach acting classes, I'll definitely have to go. I mean, I'm not a kid, but I'm just it's okay. I'll make an exception. <laughs> Thank you. Um, out of all the roles, would you be able to choose a favorite? I mean, obviously, my show Chad right now <laughs> is a sentimental one. A, because the moment I read it, I was like, this is me. This is my comedy. I know how to do this. But also, you know, just the idea that um, it's the first show that really centers around a Persian boy, a Persian family, and they're totally American and what my experience of a Persian American family is, um, it means so much to me. If I, when I was a kid, I didn't see myself on TV. Mm -hmm. As an adult, I don't see myself on TV. There's something really warped about that. Mm -hmm. um, I remember taking my kids to see Wonder Woman and my um, daughter was like, mommy, she looks like you. And that was the first thing she said. Because it's so, and she's not, she's Israeli, she's not even Persian. So, I mean, imagine if I could have turned around and said, honey, she's Persian too. Like, there's something about that. We don't see it enough. And a lot of the Persian roles that are on TV right now are either not playing Persian characters or they're characters that we're not exactly proud of um, seeing on television. So I think um, for sentimental reasons, I find I'm very connected to Chad. Um, in terms of fun, um, Charmed was definitely fun. I got to wear a genie costume. So like that is definitely up there. And then I got to be a demon who throws like fireballs. I mean, that's so fun. Yeah. And I think, I think that's really great. Like I can't wait to watch your show because it is nice to see, you know, the Persian family on TV because you never see that. And even, you know, you know, with, everyone Middle Eastern Arab you know like they're never like you said they're not really portrayed in the best ways usually like you know when you see like an Arab in a movie they're not necessarily the best type of characters you see right. that thing so I think it is really nice that you do get to play this really like you know great character and have that representation and, and see that so I think it's yeah important. it is it is important and it's it's um it's you know it's on TBS and they took a chance. I mean, they took a real chance on us. And so I hope it pays off because um, it's historic. And is this one of the more like main characters you've played across your roles? Like a Chad? <laughs> oh, definitely. I mean, it's my first series regular. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, I have tested for pilots for years. <laughs> um, and it just sort of was like, always the bridesmaid, never the bride. <laughs> so yeah. Like, um, I, I don't, you know, it feels really right that this is the one that finally sort of put me over and, and I finally got that series regular mm -hmm. um, credit. So it's definitely the biggest role I've ever played. Yeah. Yeah. And most significant. Mm, that's really exciting and are you still are you filming currently or have you finished the first season and you're on break we so we finished the first season it's it's premiering april 6th um so uh we finished filming in like august actually so we we got sort of broken up because of the pandemic and then we were one i think one of the first shows that came back um after the pandemic uh 
which was, I was very happy about that we were able to finish. Oh, that's great. How was that filming during the pandemic? Did it feel very strange? Was it? it? I felt really vulnerable. I will be honest because, you know, obviously people's idea of safety in this country is there's it's quite polarized, um, but I was definitely a mask wearer. I didn't go anywhere. My kids didn't socialize with anyone. They were at home. Like we really, from March until August, were completely isolated and didn't see anyone. And so to then suddenly go on a set and sit down in a makeup chair and take off my mask mm-hmm. was really scary, even though... I knew we had all been tested and whatnot. It still felt really vulnerable, like, because, you know, you hear all these things about false negatives. And so you just, I recognized that I was taking a risk. And of course, and then I got really angry because I always think about all, um, everyone who sort of poo-poos the arts and poo-poos actors. And yet, let's be honest, Netflix and Hulu and, you know, TV and film is what got, most people through the pandemic. I mean, the joke is like, there's nothing left to watch out there. Yeah. So there is value to what we do. And, and we were, we, here I am taking off my mask and putting myself at risk. Mm-hmm. And yet, you know, I, I always feel like when I tell people I'm an actor, it's sort of like a, you know, mm-hmm. oh. <laughs> no, but absolutely. I mean, without TV, so many you know of us and when been in lockdown that's what we need like you kind of it's like your only thing that kind of keeps you sane like oh. you need to watch something and have a yes. laugh and you know it just keeps you your energy your mood you know makes you better you know like when I watch something funny I watch a movie it makes me feel better if I was just, home all day just working and uh-huh. then that's it like I just worked and then went to bed it would be awful because you just need something you know that completely you so I need to. Without, without all of you, no way. <laughs> we would all just. So maybe, like, you know, value the arts people. <laughs> yes, absolutely. You have all the actors that haven't been working. I was really lucky that I was working. I know that I was like, I felt very blessed this mm. year, you know, because if it, it was a hard year for a lot of actors. So it's just in that moment, I remember when I took off the mask, I had a lot of feelings, <laughs> clearly. No, absolutely. I can imagine, you know, it is a scary thing, especially, especially makeup, you know, people are so close to you and touching your face and all of that. So even if someone's been tested, you always just do have that fear. And I think COVID's been yeah. that fear in everyone, you know, just being even like, you know, now when I go out walking, for example, if someone just kind of comes too close to me, I just kind of shift away. They might not have anything, but it's just that, that fear it's instilled in you now. And they were amazing. Like, don't get me wrong. The set was extremely safe and they were taking it very seriously. And they understood that actors were putting themselves out there. Um, Luckily, I trusted the actors that I was acting with. I, you know, I can't imagine if I had been with like a bunch of, you know, um, people that I didn't know, I would have felt even more nervous. Um, But they were really safe and they took care of us, which is great. Oh, that's great. That's very important. You need to be able mm-hmm. to feel comfortable and at ease because you just hundred percent couldn't do it if you were just constantly worrying, worrying. Oh God! Like especially when you're shooting because you're obviously shooting it as normal life. You're not talking about COVID in the show, so you have to be able to get kind of close to people. So that's the most important thing as long as they're safe. Yeah, exactly. So moving on to Charmed now, how did you get the role? Um, I auditioned just like, you know, every other role I've ever gotten. Um, so I, you know, I just got, I got the audition and, um, I sort of knew, you know, Charmed is one of those shows that was so huge. It was just a part of pop culture and you didn't have to have really seen it to know it was like campy. It was fun. Um, it definitely like was like wink, wink, nonch, nonch. And certain, you know, there's a, there's a, a campiness to it. Um, and I saw that the part was, you know, um, 
a genie who then becomes a demon. And so I was like, oh, it'd be really fun if I did a genie accent and then I dropped it for the demon. Um, and I don't, you know, it's always tricky when you take risks like that when you go into auditions because they could be like, no, 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 no do it again without it. So it's tricky when you sort of base your idea of the character on something like that, that, that you could walk in and they could say, oh yeah, we don't want an accent. Um, but I decided to do it because you know, when you go into an audition, you don't have anything that you, it's not like I had my hair in a ponytail and I like whipped it out for the demon or you're not doing like a quick change for an audition. So you, I needed um, something other than like going from like really quirky to really strong and powerful. So um, I thought an accent would add to that and accents are something that I, I really enjoy doing and it's fun. Um, and I remember um, I had a, like a, I told, I told you that I have a little, I had a pixie haircut and I was like, oh, they're never going to consider me if I have this pixie haircut. So I went and bought like a, a ponytail that I added. It's so like, I, I pushed all my hair back and I added a fake ponytail. So I had like genie hair. Um, I, but you know, it worked. I remember going in and doing the audition. I remember that the genie character, she was like very bubbly. She was like, oh, I'm a spanner. You know, she was like very bubbly. Um, and then the first line for the G for the demon was like, stop. And I remember when I did the demon, um, that line stop. I remember everyone in the room was like, <laughs> because they weren't expecting, um, because I myself am very bubbly, mm -hmm. um, especially if you're thinking like how many years ago that was, I was like really young and I have a very bubbly personality. So they were not expecting this like strong, um, angry woman <laughs> to come out. Um, but I, I found out shortly thereafter that I got the part and um, that they loved the accent that no one had thought to do that, so. So that's great. It worked out really well for you then. It really worked think, out. Didn't and it? I think everyone loves that accent. And I think that definitely it makes such a difference to the character. Because if you just spoke normally, you know, from genie to demon, it, it just wouldn't have had that same impact. So I think yeah. I can safely say for all Lost Charm fans, love the accent, <laughs> you know, because it just, you're not expecting it as well, you know. So I just, like, I, I think. I think when I first saw that, I, I don't think I actually even expected you to have an American accent, to be honest. So it, I think it's quite actually even like a shock just to see you kind of go from that to that. So I think it was I think it was very cool and a really great choice. And I think it really added to the character and just made it fun. It was so fun. It was so fun. I mean, and I was so glad that I did it um, because stuff like that, it, you know, it's the things that those are the things actors love doing. Mm -hmm. And um, what was your experience like working on the set? You worked quite closely with Alyssa mainly. I did. I mainly worked with uh, Alyssa and she was amazing. Everyone was really nice. Um, Alyssa was amazing for several reasons. Um, she was amazing because, you know, here I am this, this guest star. And at that point she had probably like met a thousand guest stars, probably more at that point, actually more than a thousand, probably, I don't know, like several thousand guest stars. Um, but she treated me as though I was special. And I mean, she didn't have to do that. She's such a busy woman, but she gave me a ton of advice, um, both as a female on set. She was like, just know you're always gonna hang out with hair and makeup and, you know, but you always want to be aware of the fact that you are a woman on set. And she gave me the advice. She was like, you know, you don't want to be a lead on a show because then you're working 24 seven and it's exhausting. She was like, so get on a good ensemble. So you're working maybe like a couple of days a week. Um, and I thought that was really amazing because she treated me as a professional and she essentially was like, when you book a show, it wasn't like, if you book a show, um, and as an actor, as a young actor coming in onto a set, you're so nervous. Mm -hmm. um, and it was like the biggest role I had gotten to date. And to have the, the star, I mean, she was definitely the star of the show, treat me like that. It immediately put me at ease. Um, and I didn't feel like I was, 
I felt like we were on the same level. And that's what you want when you're acting with someone, you, you, you know, and so she was really wonderful. And um, everyone, I, I really, I had such a good time start to finish. Like I even remember the lighting guys were amazing and they were like, this is called the pretty light. And it, it was like, it had like a pink glow and, and um, the DP. So it, for the fact, for the simple fact that I even remember the lighting team mm -hmm. and the DP, I think that says a lot about the kind of set it was. Yeah, I think that's really wonderful to hear, especially like just, I think Alyssa, she's um, such a sweet person. You can see that just even through her social media, but it's so nice to actually hear, you know, from you like that she was so totally. amazing on set and, you know, she seems like such a sweet person, so lovely. So it's really nice to be able to hear that. Yeah, totally. And, and I have heard all the rumors, you know what I mean? So I, w I went on set and I was like, oh my God, it's going to be like a cat fight, like whatever, you know, and it yeah. was, God, it was none of that. And um, so that was also really nice to see. No, especially, yeah, because even, I mean, till this day, there's still so, like, you still hear bad things about the set, and it's it's been 14 years since the show ended, I know. and there's still, and I actually, it's, I feel really bad for Alyssa, because I feel like she gets a lot of it, like, all, like, the feuds or the bad things are always linked to her, and I, and, you know, obviously, unless you've been on the set with her we us we can us fans will never know we can you cannot like assume or disagree or agree you just ignore the rumors but it's really nice to hear that she truly is just such a sweet you know lovely giving it was amazing because it's really yeah. just I think it's after hearing that I think it's just so unfair you know kind of the way the press portray her at times or just you know the way cast members might attack her because you know I think She's just so lovely. So it's really unfair I mean, for her to get all that. Well, how about just look at the fact that of that show, she is the only one that regularly continues to work. Mm. That says something. It's not just her talent. It's that she's pleasant to be around. Yes, absolutely. I mean, that's all the proof you need. <laughs> like, no, you know, you know what I mean? She's like, she's a great actress but she isn't necessarily like, she's not Meryl Streep, do you know what I mean? So it's yeah. the fact that she continues to get work is not just because of the fact that she's talented, but that she is likable and she is easy to work with and she comes to set and she knows her lines and she isn't, you know, um, starting fights and she's professional. I think that's all you need to know is that mm -hmm. she she's never stopped working for a reason. Yeah, exactly. Because I've never heard anything about her on any other shows, any other sets. I've never heard bad things about her. You know, she wasn't Who's the Boss for a really long time. And I never heard anything bad about her, about her time on that set. And I think... During puberty! When, yeah. when, like, when kids go wild sometimes. I mean, come mm. on. It's, it's like, can we just put that to bed? Like, the girl has done nothing. And frankly, you know, people just don't like powerful, intelligent women. And she's both of those things. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I think it's really nice for us to all just hear your experience with her as well. <laughs> but I think, you know, for me, reading all those things, I never believe them anyway, because I just look at her and I'm just like, such just just looking at her. She's just like such a, you know, a great person, just genuine. You just can you can just see it. You know, there are people you can tell, you know, even if you don't know someone, you can just kind of see by their persona and the way they are with people, you know, she's always been yeah. so throughout her career, you know, always working with charities and it's just, you know, she's just such a, you know, just- I mean, she's an activist, she yeah. she cares. And I mean, don't get me wrong, the other two girls, definitely they introduced themselves to me. They weren't rude, you know, they weren't like standoffish or rude in any way. Yeah, no, that's, um, that's really nice to hear. And especially, um, that you get to, you know, you're also, it's nice to know that you're also like having a good time with the rest of the crew as well, with the makeup and the lighting and you had a, just a positive experience just all around on set and not just the actors. Did, um, but did you um, have any like socialization with the guys on set? Like there was, cause you did work a little, cause you did work a bit, not as close as Alyssa, but you did work a bit closely with uh, Chris who was played by Drew Fuller. Right. Um, I, I, you know, I met Drew, but I didn't like hang out with him or anything like that. I, you know, 
I remember, I think like all the actors went into their trailers to eat. So it wasn't like we were all hanging out at mm -hmm. lunchtime. You know, I've, I've done shows where I eat with the actors and then, yeah. but this was a show they all went to their trailers, um, which is fine. I, I did that on Chad sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and it literally was either like, I wanted to FaceTime my kids or, you know, it had nothing necessarily to do with being standoffish. Yeah. Um, but I didn't really like hang out. Like I didn't like, there was no like buddy, buddy. And mm -hmm. I think as a female, it's always tricky, right? You don't want to give the wrong impression. Yeah. And I remember having that conversation with Alyssa of like, it is weird coming, you know, when you're like, you know, attractive or whatever and young. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think I was kind of more um, like with the guys than I was with the girls. Yeah, no, that's understandable. I can, I can understand that as well. Cause yeah, I mean, you are a gorgeous woman and you maybe you don't want to give me the wrong impression especially it's, tricky. Like, it's a tricky yeah. thing so it's like and not that they even like and it's not even saying like oh they found me attractive then they weren't going to be able to you know, like, yeah. control themselves I, that's not what I'm saying but I just you have to actors hear rumors mm -hmm. and so you hear rumors about girls on set and you hear you know like I mean, come on, we know that stuff happens. And so I just was, I was so young and I was so green and I was so new. And then to hear Alyssa sort of like confirm, like be, be careful on set, take care of yourself, or, you know, advocate for yourself, but also be wary. And to hear her sort of confirm that was like, oh, oh shit, this is real. You know what I mean? So I just, um, I was always very aware of being a female on set. Mm -hmm. Especially I feel like on that particular set as well, because you know, that show was, you know, very like female empowerment. You had like three, you know, you know, good looking ladies on that show, you know, three really attractive yeah. women and you know, attractive guys on set as well. So, you know, that also just kind of that environment, you know, is I feel just yeah. like extra in a way. Yes, you know, definitely. It was it was a very steamy show at times, you know, a lot of yes. chemistry between the yes. characters. So yes. I can definitely understand that. And how um how was it? I'm very curious to know how was your experience with like green screens and pretending to throw fireballs because obviously that's not real. <laughs> that was all new to me. Um, I will say that the special effects pe people on the show they didn't make me feel stupid. Like I, they explained everything. You know you don't know what it was again the first time I had done any of that stuff N you know now I would feel less um uncertain about it uh but they were very nice and it was really easy like there wasn't any they they told me what to do like it was like basically this is what you're gonna do you're gonna be holding it one second and then we're gonna take it out of your hand and then it's gonna look like it disappeared and it was you know it was really easy they were so nice about it okay that's cool and how because at one point you were on the flying carpet. So were you, were you behind a green screen for that? Do you remember how that was shot? So at one point, I remember in one scene, you jumped onto the flying carpet and then like it flew out the window. Yeah, it was total green screen. I mean, I had to jump onto something and like pretend or whatever. But mm -hmm. yeah, again, it, it was it was not as hard as I thought it was going to be. Okay. It's, just, like, it's just pretend. It's just like, you know, you're just pretending. Yeah, I can imagine that could you could feel a little weird, but it could also be quite fun just to kind of have fun and make believe and pretend you can do all these things. Yeah, it did not feel weird. I mean, actors, we do so many weird things that don't feel weird to us. It, I think it's weird to the like the outside person, but to us, it's like, hey, I'm pretending to be on a like magic carpet or I'm throwing a fireball. So for us, it I don't know, it didn't feel weird at all. It was like totally fun. It was fun. Okay, that's good then. And did you, did you ever, because I know some actors don't, did you actually watch the episode, like, after it was I did. Okay, were you I happy did. with when how it, it came out? I was totally happy with how it came out. Um, I loved it. My kids have seen it since then. They love it. 
Um, my parents love it. It was totally start to finish to product a, an, a, a great experience. Hmm. I'm so curious. Were there any scenes that you shot that were cut out? No. No, that was okay. That's good to know. Because uh, recently I did speak with one actor who was also on the show and he actually got to kiss Alyssa Milano, but that scene oh, was wow. out of the show. <laughs> so I was like so disappointed with that. So I was like, I just need to know if any scenes were like cut out of the show. Nope, nothing was cut out. That was like, that was all the stuff that I was going to do. And I don't even think I had any lines cut, so. Oh, okay, that's great. And what, would you, did you prefer wearing the genie costume or your demon costume? Oh, the genie costume. Mm -hmm. So much fun. Like, even though I was like not eating and, you know, um, mm -hmm. totally self-conscious. Um, I wasn't self-conscious, but I was like leading up to it. And then mm -hmm. once you get on set, you sort of have to like put all those insecurities aside. Um, but I loved it. It was so fun. Like you just immediately feel like that character. Mm -hmm. I loved the demon costume in the sense that I thought it looked really good. And yeah. I was like, oh, this could be a great audition outfit. Um, like I wasn't someone who wore belts or tucked my shirt. So it was something that I sort of a look I stole after. <laughs> um, but, oh, the genie costume was way more fun. And you didn't get to keep any part of it or anything, did you? Oh, that's such a shame. I know. I think that's a very I cool. I think it's just such a cool outfit just to have, you know, wear it on Halloween or something, you know, it's just so cool. I'm like, I don't even know if that's a thing. Do people actually ask for their costumes? Like, I, 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 I don't know. I didn't even know that was like something people did. Like, I think it's one thing, like, um, on Chad, like, there were a couple of shirts that I really liked and they gifted it to me or like, there was something that was like a pamphlet and I was like, can I get a copy of this pamphlet? Mm -hmm. um, like maybe if there were a pamphlet or something, I would have said, hey, can I get a copy of this? But um, especially since they always have extras, but there wasn't anything like that in my episode that I could be like, and I, even if there were, I don't think I would have asked. I was way too new and inexperienced to feel like I, I could have asked. Yeah. And you were very, so you mentioned before, because you were like, weren't eating or, and you were very like strict with your food. What did you have to do? Like, what did you do beforehand to kind of prepare for that role since you were always very, I'm sure your midriff and everything. So I booked the role in December, but it was filming right after the holidays, the new year. <laughs> and during that time, I went to Argentina to Buenos Aires with my um, husband's family. Um, I don't think we were married then. I think we were just together. Um, I can't remember. <laughs> this was a long time ago. Um, so we went to Buenos Aires and I remember all of them were eating like dolce de leche and like ice cream, all these like gorgeous, you know, Argentinian foods. And I'm literally at every meal, I'm like, oh, de buffet and vegetables, which is like steak and vegetables. And it was like every meal I essentially ate steak and vegetables. And in the morning it was like eggs and vegetables. Um, and because we were traveling, it wasn't like I was getting up and doing two hour workouts, you know, like we were jet lagged and we were tired. And, um, but because we were sightseeing, I was walking all day. Um, and that's all I really did. Like I just ate healthy. Um, and I walked all day, but I didn't like not eat. Mm -hmm. um you know and that that's really it like I didn't like go crazy and do like 2,000 sit-ups or anything <laughs> yeah I mean you seem like naturally a very petite you know person you didn't you didn't seem like you have to be so oh I have to eat like super super strictly before the roll I mean you I feel like you would have been like, it's a shame you didn't get to enjoy that holiday and just eat and everything with everybody else. I am not a naturally petite person. Um, the very first, remember that first audition I told you I had in Los Angeles mm -hmm. of the princess on like some sort of like superhero show? Uh, the casting director called my manager and was like, we would have given her that part. She was the perfect one that came, but she's about 10 pounds too heavy. 
No. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not a business that caters to body positivity. Mm. No, I think, yeah, that's, that's not a nice thing to hear, especially at a young age, you know, when you're older, you're kind of, you can maybe brush it off a bit more and be like, okay, whatever. But you know, when you're younger as well, that's when you're more like self-conscious about your body. So I think that's, you know, it can be damaging for some people to hear that, you know, it's really, yeah. yeah, So I think, no. I mean, it's unfortunately though, it's also a reality, right? It's like, as supportive as my agents are as supportive as like they never said anything to me but like the reality is that that I'm a curvier woman and I'm in a business that doesn't appreciate curves Mm -hmm. on attractive women right yeah I think curves are great I think it's nice for you know young girls as well to see women who have different body shapes different sizes because you know, it, it makes, you know, if someone's not like super petite and super skinny, you know, right. and it has more curves, it makes you feel better. It's like, oh, there's someone on who's on TV and they look like right. me, we have similar body types and it gives you right. confidence, but it's very hard. Like, you know, like even when, I, you know, when I was growing up, like watching Charmed, you know, these, these four women had incredible bodies, you know, and it, it makes you just kind of look and be like, oh, I don't look like that. Like, I don't have those abs and I don't have that shape. And it, it just kind of makes you feel like, oh, like I want that body and I, I need to have like a flat stomach because that's all you see in the media is women with perfect bodies and flat stomachs. And you're like, oh, I have a bit of meat. That's that's obviously not attractive. No one's going right. to like that, you know? So I think it's good to see definitely that. And especially because um, Alyssa at one point, she did gain a bit of weight when she was on the show around the third season. And I remember watching that and I thought, oh, that's really nice to see. She's normal. She's human. You know, she gained right. weight. She, she's not like always looking perfect. I mean, she still looked amazing. Even when she gained weight, she yeah. looked great, but it was just nice to see someone just, just normal, you know, like you gain weight, you lose weight. It's... I mean, it's, you know, look, I will say there's a lot more talk of body positivity, but there's not a lot of casting of body positivity. Mm-hmm. I think it is right now. It's a lot of talk, but it's not a lot of action. I don't see body diversity on television. I just don't. Mm-hmm. No, it's I like there's two extremes. Either you're like on one end or you're on the other end. So either you're like completely, you know, toned to, to top, you know, top to bottom, or you're on the other end of the spectrum where you're m- much, much larger. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's no like, just, just in the middle. Mm-hmm. like me um unless you're playing a mom and then it's like well why do why can only moms like why can't the genie be heavier like why why can't why can't her stomach have rolls Mm -hmm. right I mean it's just it's nice it's nice to see that it's you know it's a it's a good message you know it's 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 a great message exactly you're sending the message to people that it's okay it's normal to look like that you know up until now I thought you know I don't have a super flat stomach but up until you know just the recent years I always thought that was a problem just because of what you see out there in the media on tv and magazines you think I'm it's ugly it's not attractive to have rolls or to not have like a flat stomach and any you know to have stretch marks or have something like you you think look at all these things and think they're ugly when they're normal and even people who seem to have the perfect bodies they do have these things you just don't see it yeah and the ones who don't have it are working their butts off exactly and and I you know it's like I it's um yeah it's you can read up on the patriarchy and how they're (laughs) how they use this impossible you know, image of women to really keep women down. I mean, it's really, it's such a um, tool that they use yeah. to keep us powerful. No, it's, you know, it's very, it's very unfair. And we could go on, I could go on. And we could go on that, that's that's a whole other podcast. <laughs> exactly. Body positivity, body image in every industry. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so moving on to another question. If you if you could choose a character to play on um, on Charmed, I probably know the answer to this already. But who would you choose if you could choose like a main character to play? Which character would you choose? I mean, Alyssa's character for sure. Yeah, 
um, like a, what a fun part to, you know, play all these different interesting, like, like she became a genie in that episode. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, definitely. And how do you, how do you find it um, playing different characters? Do you prefer more to do more comedy or like, how do you find like doing kind of more serious or like dramatic roles Me mentally as well? How, how is it for you to kind of get into that character? Uh, so I test for more comedy. Mm -hmm. I've never tested for drama, okay. but more of my guest stars are dramatic or they were sort of in the middle of my career. Now it's more comedic. Um, I like both. I think comedy is way more fun, obviously. Um, and it requires more skill. Mm -hmm. um, how do I prepare? I mean, I don't really prepare for like a comedy. I don't really prepare. You just either it's in the written word or it's not. Mm -hmm. So either the timing and the jokes are there. Um, I'm not the kind of comedian who can make a joke out of a badly written one. Like, I, you know, there are some people like Amy Schumer who could probably make everything work and make it funny. i that's not me. I need good writing. Um, and there are certain characters I play that are more in my wheelhouse for comedy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, so there's no preparation there. In terms of like drama, again, there's like not really preparation, right? I'm not, if I get an audition for someone dying of cancer, I, I'm not gonna like go and research dying of cancer. You know, all you really do is you center yourself right before you start speaking and you speak from a place of truth. And again, the words get you there. Like I don't have to do much to be in that moment mm -hmm. and um when it comes to because actually i was discussing this with my sister the other day we were actually watching um how i met your mother and there was a scene where um one of the characters barney was um saying something which i'm not going to repeat i can't even remember all of it but it was um religiously quite offensive so have you ever, like, how is that, I don't know if you've ever come across anything like that in scripts, but how, how are you with things like that, kind of jokes that are like that? Do you, would you refuse to make a joke like that, or would you have problems with that? Have you ever come across anything in the script that you've taken issue with? Um, you know, for years I wouldn't audition for any terrorist role, so there, there are things that I put my foot down. <clears throat> I won't play a terrorist. I won't sort of especially if it's a, a Persian terrorist, I just won't, I just won't do it. Um, historically, we aren't the terrorists, <laughs> like we aren't as a culture. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had a really hard time with that and I just wouldn't do it, um, except one time I did and I regretted it <clears throat> because I, get, I got the part and it was a role that um, I always felt like dirty. I, I, I just didn't, I wish I hadn't done it. Mm -hmm. um, Interestingly, right before I got Chad, I was going to, I, I had an audition for a Persian pilot that a very A-list celebrity was producing. I'm not even going to say her name, but uh, it was a Persian pilot that I did not want to go in an audition for because I found it offensive. I found it like every joke was at the expense of my culture, every mm -hmm. joke, and I couldn't stand it. And I but it was one of those things where you feel like you have to go because what if you could get it? And um, at that time, I didn't know they were doing chat again. Mm -hmm. And so I had this audition and I was really bummed about it. And in the casting office, I was actually like complaining about the pilot. And I was like, you know what a good Persian pilot was? Chad, Chad was a good Persian pilot um, because it didn't denigrate it didn't have to denigrate the, the culture in order to be funny. Um, and I swear to God, the next day I got the audition for Chad, which was crazy. Mm -hmm. um, but so I did do the offensive, an offensive joke in the audition, but I probably was not 100% committed to it. Mm -hmm. So it probably showed and it was probably not very good acting on my part. Um, so yeah, that has happened. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think it's, you know, some actors you see, they are okay with making, you know, jokes about their culture, you know, at their expense, they're like, they're fine with it. But I think, you know, if you're not okay with something like that, then it is gonna, it is gonna show because you're just, you're not gonna be happy doing it. And I think mm-hmm. it's great that you got Chad. It was meant to be. You're meant to get that it role, was. not the other role. Totally, I know. Because I think that would have made you quite miserable as well, just to have to go to totally. work and say those things. Yeah, and that wasn't a situation like if I were on How I Met Your Mother and I had a singular line that was offensive, I would talk to the writers because you're a series regular, so you have some job security at that point, I would have talked to the writers. But this was a pilot where I could very quickly tell that that it was just gonna be a show making fun of Persians, Mm -hmm. even though it was written by a Persian. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Some, some, you know, are fine to make fun of their own culture, but, you know, I think, you know, there are some things, you know, you can say and, you know, j- like very light things, you know what I mean? Like people do make fun of their own cultures, you know, people joke around, yes, about, totally. but not in an, off- in a- in an offensive way. This wasn't that- like that, right? So like even in Chad, you can see in the most recent, pre- in the most recent promo, the character of Chad, like saying his, the food in his culture is weird and disgusting. Mm-hmm. But like everyone around him is like, oh no, it's great, Chad, I love it. But so he's complaining about the food and calling it looking like, you know, I can't remember what the joke is, but um, it's very clear he's the only one who thinks that. And it's very clear that he is embarrassed about his culture and nobody else is. Mm-hmm. This other pilot, the character was ridiculous. Mm-hmm. She had this bizarre accent and she was like all about the Gucci and it was like a, it was a stereotype of the culture oh. and, and that was um, so it wasn't like I could walk in and be like this line bothers me it was like the very nature of the mm-hmm. character was offensive. Mm-hmm. Yeah okay and then yeah that's gonna be very yeah that's very different there are just if you're saying like little one-liners that kind of joke about you know yours like your culture then it's like every a lot of people do that you know, yeah. not even actors, just generally people, we just all do that. We all joke about our cultures, but, you know, if it's like, you know, no, I, when it's like stereotyping, you know, it's just, it's not a nice thing. It's kind of, it's kind of like, you know, saying, it's kind of like, you know, I think like a Lebanese stereotype, for example, is, you know, like they all have like, you know, their faces done, lips done, all very plastic and very fake, you know, and that's not, it's not true of all Lebanese. I'm half Lebanese. I'm nothing okay. like that, you know. So again, yeah, like I wouldn't yeah. be happy to play any roles like that. So I think yeah. I'd be. If I, I, would, I could never, even if I had a passion for acting, I could never do it because I just need a nightmare to work with. I just would not take. I it mean, off. totally. But it's like when you have kids and you have like mouths to feed, you have tuition to pay for. I mean, it's like you, you sort of, you have to look at it as kind of a job at times. Um, but I wasn't happy about it. I mean, it's, it was very clear. I mean, like literally in the casting office, I was complaining about the pilot. Yeah, then that's that's a great thing that you didn't get that and you got chat. It was, it was, yeah. yeah. You don't want to be somewhere that's just kind of destroying your soul in a way, you know, yeah, you don't totally, be in like a horrible totally. environment like that. Just, you don't want to go to work and be miserable because I, no, no. As much as you need I, to make money, it's not, it's not worth no, it. It's not worth it. Pay. It's, no, I totally agree. And so what a lot of people actually might not know, which is, um, I discovered it only recently, is that your husband was also on Charmed, um, yes. which was um, very, very cool. How Have you two ever kind of discussed that, like your experiences and both being on that show? I think it's just quite funny as well. Like, you know, you're both, it was, you know, you're just both on that show. <laughs> I think I think I've yeah. ever come across a Charmed couple. Um, he... A charmed couple. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think we've both done other shows too. To, uh, um, but yeah, it was kind of cool. But here's the thing. It's like we both had theater backgrounds. Mm-hmm. And that was a show that was campy and did require some, like it required their guest stars to have more um, like transformative, like like you had to be able to be a genie and then a demon. That requires like some skill you have to you know other guest stars I don't know we're I have no idea I didn't watch the show but like we're wizards it requires some 
talent to do that. You aren't just going in and playing real life. <laughs> and that lends itself to theater actors, right? We have the ability to transform like that. We have the ability to, you know, use our imagination and be creative. And so it makes sense when I think about it that he was also on that show. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but, you know, it was sort of cool when he went in. I think our, our experiences were very different. Yeah. Um, but uh, it was cool. I mean, it was very cool. And he played a cool character. So it was, you know. Was fun. Yeah, and I I saw um, I was kind of looking through some of your work recently. I saw um there was a show that you were both on. What there was I remember seeing a scene. I, I think it was more of like a crime or like an action. But I were you two on a show at like the same time? No, we did produce a short. Like it was like uh, not quite a short film, but it was like a thirty minute. Um, pilot presentation that we produced ourselves mm -hmm. um, that that he co-wrote uh, with someone. Maybe that's what you were looking at. Um, okay, yeah, maybe. Okay, maybe maybe it was someone who looked like him because I remember watching some of your work recently and I saw some. I don't know. Maybe he was like a. Maybe he looked just like your husband because I remember watching a series you did. I can't, I'm not sure the name of it, but I, it was like a scene. Uh, you were sitting in like an apartment with some guy. I think it looked like you were, oh, drug, you were drug, you drug, trying to drug him. I think uh, that's, him yes, that is, believe it or not, that is our pilot. Okay, that was the pilot. Okay. That was the pilot. So yeah, my husband's in it with me. Mm -hmm. um, we sort of don't like each other in the pilot, but um, uh, yeah, so that that is the only time like we've worked together. together. Mm -hmm. Like even in grad school, we didn't work that much together, which was, was kind of funny. Okay, so was it just that that pilot you shot? There was nothing more from that. No, um, no. I, and we've both done NCIS. We both, I, you know, there are other shows at different times that we did, but um, no, we haven't worked together, which is interesting. Okay, I think probably that's probably a good thing, though. I think I don't know what it would be like to work if you live with and also can't constantly worked with um, someone you were married to. Oh, I think it would be fine. Oh yeah, you'd be okay with that. I mean, we're like best friends. I mean, like we just had a pandemic where we were around each other twenty four seven, and we laughed and we would joke that we like are getting along better than ever. So I yeah, I, it would be totally oh, fine. Okay. And oh, I have crazy. I wouldn't want anyone else like to mm -hmm. be by my side because he's going to be the most truthful, the most honest. He also knows like how good I can be. And he also knows how bad I can be. So he's always going to push me to be better and vice versa. So if like, if anything, I would enjoy working with him. Oh, okay. Well, that's amazing to hear. Cause I know some people might not want to work with their spouses because they feel like they need that space from them, but that's really nice. Yeah. We went to grad school together. You have to remember, like, grad acting school is, like, really immersive. You're there, like, seven days a week, and it's, like, all day long, and it's only a class of, like, 16 people, and so it's, like, a little marriage to begin with. Yeah. We have shared language. We have, you know, we, and then we work on every audition together, so, um, and we like being around each other, so it's fine. <laughs> it would be good. Oh, okay. And, um, how how long have you two been married now? Got married in 2007, so it's going to be 14 years this year. Oh, that's so lovely. Yeah. Oh, in, in September of next, like September 2000, uh, 2021, mm -hmm. it'll be that we've been together for 20 years, which is bananas. Wow, that is, that's amazing. That's so amazing. I think it's lovely, especially these days to see you know a couple because I think also divorce these days and everything is quite you know quite a common thing so it's really beautiful when you see a couple have been together for such a long time yeah I mean we were really good friends for two years mm -hmm. um before we ever got together so I think just like that friendship is I, I couldn't imagine not him not being my friend mm -hmm. And um, how has it been then with you and COVID and the pandemic being like in isolation? How was that with you and your family? Did you drive each other crazy or did you have a lot of fun? 
Like the um, I think it's a little bit of both, right? So like the morning or the, like, and there wasn't one day that was like, oh, it's been great start to finish. There's, it is, you know, it was, um, it was hard. It was really hard. Um, we, you know, I think, thank God we live in Los Angeles, so we could go to the beach. We could go on hikes. Um, I can't imagine like if we lived in an area that didn't have that kind of nature near us. Um, but you know, my kids go to an amazing school. So their online program was amazing. And then they very quickly got the kids on campus. Um, so, and I know what a privilege that is and I'm not taking it for granted. Um, but you know, like we have ridiculous COVID purchases. Like we, we bought like this water slide, like bouncy house, uh, like an air hockey table, a trampoline. We have a treadmill and a boxing bag and a Peloton. And like mm -hmm. our whole gym is an exercise slash gaming room. I mean, it was like the amount of junk we bought just mm -hmm. to like get ourselves through. And like the kids are just like video game obsessed now. I mean, there's yeah. no, I, I don't, there's no getting them off the iPad. <laughs> I think that's a good thing then that schools have opened it up again so yes. at least they're oh off God. the iPads because I think yes. kids these days are too much like you know even when I was younger I I never had any of this technology so the most we had was the internet which I never really used you know every everything was go outside and play with your friends so I feel like everyone kids these days are, are too focused like on technology and you just see so many little kids yeah. like on their iPhones and iPads and, like you just look at them like I didn't have that when I was younger. I had to go outside and play with my friends. I know. But you have to understand that when you do live in an area lost, like, I mean, I would think the UK even was hard. Not everyone has a backyard. Not everyone. Mm -hmm. And it's not like we live in a society where, or a time where you can say, hey, just go, go out and play. I mean, like, I would never let my kids just go out and play. No. Yeah. no. Like, like... <laughs> Sex traffickers. I'm not even someone. I'm not even one of those parents that really like worries about stuff like that. Yeah. But it's just not something you do anymore. I went out. I, I we used to leave and go get lost in the woods around our house. I remember we found like some weird cemetery in in our like in the woods, and we were gone for hours. And my mom had no idea where we were, but it was fine. Yeah. But that was like. 30 years ago so mm -hmm. it's just that we live in a different time and unfortunately screens are a part of that because if you think about it how much are you on your screen now oh my god all the time <laughs> all the time so you have to think like parents are on their screens their kids are seeing it kids are modeling behavior after what they see so we're as responsible for it as as do you know what I mean? It's yeah. It's a very complicated issue. I would never be the one to say like kids should not be on screens. I mean, my child, one of them, like became an early reader because uh, they so badly wanted to learn mm -hmm. how to read the stuff in the chats of like their video games. So I don't know. It it, it was it was impossible to fight it during the mm -hmm. pandemic. And oh, especially, no, especially now. I, I like now, I think technology is even more so. Everyone's using it even more because people, some people are working yeah. from home as well. So you just yeah. have no option. You know, you're no. constantly and, on and some I just kind let of go of, yeah. I <laughs> let go of all of that and it is what it is. Yeah. No, I think it, I think it's, I think it's important to have a balance. I think it's good yeah. to obviously be on your phone and buy on Because like you said, you know, it helps. It helps, you know, you, you, your child learn to read so it's you know it's a great thing as well but yeah. I think it's good to have that balance of screen time it is. and also it's just not good for your eyes as well that's always no. my fear. oh my god that's it's my terrible. biggest fear right now is I don't want to have glasses so I'm always like just limit your screen time look at your phone a little less you know I mean we try to get out we try to do hikes we tried the kids rollerblade and roller skate I mean you just have to come up with ways of getting them out of the house yeah they love yeah. the beach Especially, thank god Mm -hmm. especially keeping active yeah that's so yes important. yeah well thank you so much of for course. Me today um i believe that's all the questions i have for you great um, so i really appreciate your time and thank you so much for joining me i think of the course. fans are gonna love this and it's just so exciting <laughs> to talk to you
Well, I had a great time and I, uh, I look forward to uh, hearing it. <laughs> I probably won't listen to it. I don't want to hear myself talk. I'll probably be like, ooh. Um, but no, this is, this is a pleasure and I'm glad. Um, I hope it works out. Oh, thank you so much. And I mean, yeah, you sounded great. For me, I always hate the way I sound on podcasts. I never want to do that because I just get annoyed with myself as I repeat a lot of words. To say, you know, I say a lot of the same words and I just look at myself and I just hate myself. But it doesn't change. So I accept it. It's we just have to love ourselves. Love yourselves. Exactly. <laughs> No, but uh, I never watch these back. So I just post them and everyone can That's enjoy smart. them. <laughs> That's smart. <laughs> thank you so much. It was great meeting you. It was so great meeting you too. And I'll definitely- Just let me know when and I can repost and all of that. Thank you so much. I'll definitely, I'll be posting it probably uh, sometime next week, probably mid next okay. week. So once it's up, I will send it to you great. and tag you and everything. Great. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much. Nice. And have a Thank lovely you. day. <laughs> day. Yes. And you have a lovely night. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye.